tutorial we're going to create a separate class called text message to hold each of the text messages that we receive and send and we're also going to modify the main activity to track and display the text messages that we're interested in and also to manage sending an automated reply and we're going to start by creating some member variables thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a constructor Studio's code generation capabilities to create two constructors and also the getter and setter methods. Because of my convention of using the leading M on the member variables, I've had to make some mild changes to the automated code that was generated. But here are the results, and this is a nice generic class that will allow us to hold a single text message. To this class now, I have added a two string. You should add a two string to pretty much every class you create. And this true string is going to come in handy because when we manage the list view, when the list view wants to know how to print each of the messages and display them on the screen, it's going to look to the two string for instructions. We're now going to do a little additional work in this second constructor, which only has the message body and the phone number. Now, in the earlier constructor, the user specifies all three, including the timestamp. But if the timestamp is not supplied, what we want to do is we want to generate the timestamp manually by asking the system the date and time and including that in the third parameter in our object. So to do that I'm going to create a temporary calendar variable and get an instance of the calendar and then I'm going to set up this as the date format that we want to use for our messages inside the uh, object and then I'm going to take the uh, information from the current date and time put it into the current format and then put that into the object. We're going to switch now to laying out the screen for our app and when we get to the layout page which is the activity XML file you might find there's some errors here to get rid of them you should just either refresh the layout or build the app usually the errors will go away. Alright we're going to get rid of this hello world which we don't need and you can also see these lines are coming up suggesting that the default constraint view for Android Studio 2.2 is in effect. So we're going to switch this out to a layout, view, a relative layout view. And we're going to delete these constraints that only are needed in constraint view. Oops. And uh, we're not going to really need this uh, hello world, so we're going to get rid of that also. And getting back to the WYSIWYG view now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a spinner up here, which is the drop-down menu. And then underneath that, we're going to put a list of all the text messages that we want to show. So let's start by finding a spinner. Here's a spinner right here, and I'm going to put that right up here. And then underneath that, let me change the name of the spinner. I'm going to call that, uh, let's call that auto reply spinner underscore SP that way we'll know it's a spinner okay and then underneath that we'll put the uh, the list of text messages that we want to show now we haven't used a list view in the past and this will be a good time to introduce that so we're gonna put that right underneath and there is our list view and we're going to call that and we'll call it LV for list view Okay, and that's our nice, simple uh, layout. And later on in the enhancements, you'll be adding a button somewhere to this to make it, allow the user to add additional messages to the drop-down menu. But we're not going to do that here in the basic app. We're going to take this transmitter that we've built, and we're going to modify it slightly to be a little bit more generic. 
so that we can supply it with any phone number and any message and it will send that message by text. To do that I'm going to insert a new parameter in here and then I'm going to change everything inside uh, to use information from inside that text message. We're now going to introduce some member variables and associate the member variables with their corresponding layout variables. Okay, and now we're going to associate those variables with their layout counterparts. So to do that, we're going to create a new initialization method, as is our habit. spinner code to this project. I'm not going to go over it in detail because there have been previous tutorials on spinners. I've used an array list instead of an array to make it easier for you when you do your enhancements to add to the list. And as an initial set of choices, we're going to say that the three reasons we cannot reply to the user's text are because we're either driving, sleeping, or eating. And right now I have it set to send a toast message based on what's picked but eventually we're going to turn this into a situation where if the text is received we're going to send one of these replies back automatically to the user. We're in the process in this tutorial of modifying the main activity and building the transmitter that's inside. However, if we think a little bit about what's going to happen down the road, we're going to build a receiver that's going to spontaneously capture text messages that are being sent to the phone. This receiver is going to send an update message to the main activity and the main activity is going to do two things. It's going to take that message and display it on the screen and it's also going to call on the transmitter to send an auto reply to whoever sent that message. Now we have a practical problem. We need to create some sort of a communication link between this receiver and the main activity. Now if there were several main activities running around in our app, getting the receiver to find the right one and to send the update accordingly uh, would be a challenge. But we're lucky in that we're only going to have one main activity in our app. So by creating a static method called update, the receiver can easily communicate with the main activity by calling the static method. So let's do that now. Back here in our main activity class, we've added this update list method, which takes a text message object as its only parameter. The first thing it does is it creates a brand new text message object, taking the same phone number as the original text message that was given and then adding to it the automatic reply that was created earlier in main activity. This auto reply is the message saying I can't respond to you right now because I'm either driving, eating, or sleeping. Then we use this brand new transmitter that we built to send that message out immediately. Afterwards we still have the chore of taking the message that was received and displaying it on our screen right here using this list view and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add the text message that was just received into this array list of messages and then modifying the adapter for the list view to let it know that we've added another element to it and that it needs to update. Uh, notice that this is a static method to make it easier for the receiver to call it but as a result of that all the variables that are inside here also have to be static because as you know static methods cannot access dynamic variables. So as a result of that, most of the variables now in our main activity have become static. And this is okay because we're only going to have one main activity. I want to call your attention to two small details. The first is that I've created this static variable called context and I'm taking the current object during initialization and saving it as the as the context. I can do this I'm taking a non-static variable and putting it into a static variable and the reason that I can do this is there's only going to be one main activity uh, object. And the reason I need this handle is because when I send toast messages out for debugging purposes I need to have the context included in the toast message. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is that we've added 
some uh, a new adapter and uh, augmented the adapter uh, to connect to the message list at the bottom of our initialization method. There's a lot of stuff going on here now in the main activity class and I'm going to sc scroll through it slowly one time at the end of this tutorial here right now so to make sure that you haven't left anything out. It's time to test the app now and we've got our emulator running and the default is showing up as driving but if we pick one of the other ones you can see we get a toast message showing the one we picked. Notice that the list view is empty right now because we haven't loaded the text messages from the ones that we've gotten since the app has started. That's That we're going to do by building the receiver and that's the next part of the tutorial. Mm -hmm.